Many problems with hair loss begin with the scalp. And for that, a trichologist may be your best stop before visiting a local drugstore. When it comes to hair loss, Dr. Alan Bauman, founder and medical director of the Bauman Medical Group, is one of the leaders in hair loss and transplant surgery. Dr. Bauman has been featured nationally on the Today Show, Good Morning America, Fox News, CNN, and the medical syndicated program, The Doctors. He joins us on Hair Loss Solutions TV to offer his insight on trichology. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Jeff. It's really, really great it. to have you here. I know your schedule is absolutely jam-packed. You were just in Italy traveling over to the CR uh, labs that were over there. Correct. You must have enjoyed the food, I'm sure. Oh, the, the food was amazing. I mean, I was there for five days. I came back with a thousand photos and half of them were food. <laughs> <laughs> that's typically good. That's good. That's my Italian heritage. So Yeah, for sure. Well, it was amazing. It was amazing. The, the most important thing that we're here for, hair thinning and hair loss and the scalp conditions that come along. In, a, in another segment, we're going to talk about the surgical part of it, but let's talk about trichology. Tell us about hair losses and hair loss causes. Give the audience that are out there the knowledge that, A, they're not alone, and the reality that there are solutions. Tell us about trichology that we've been hearing about all through the news. Sure, sure. So many people have never even been to a trichologist, don't even know what trichology is. And especially here in this part of the world, in America, we don't have too many trichologists, people who are trained in the study of hair and scalp. But across the world, especially in Europe and Italy and such, uh, of course, I was there. And even in South America, trichologists are all over the place. And so if you've got a hair thinning problem and, or if you've got an irritation of the scalp or flaky dandruff or some other issue, you're going to go see it. You would think to go to see a trichologist first, um, but not here in America. But, we're, you know, we're going to start to change that. That's right. That's here, in the, here in the U.S., you know, if you've got a hair problem, many people would just jump over to a dermatologist or maybe they would seek out somebody like me, a board certified hair restoration physician. But there's no paramedical subspecialty, at least not yet. But we're changing that. That's good. That's good. Well, let's tell the audience, um, Dr. Bauman, what is trichology? You know, they hear that word, and that word really, like you said, has not been in America very long. But the reality is, what is it the study of? Right. So trichology is the study of hair and scalp. So it's a, the study of hair and scalp diseases or problems. And many people think, well, that, you know, hair loss is the main uh, main problem that could go on on the scalp. But actually, there's a lot more stuff that can happen. And I see it in my own practice. Uh, even we know that, for example, the most popular shampoo in the world is head and shoulders. And it's mm. be why? Why is that? It's because a huge number of people, millions, maybe tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people have at some point in their time, itchy, flaky, or irritated scalp. And we know today that science has proven uh, in many, many scientific journal articles on this, that if you have irritated or inflamed scalp, you're not going to grow good hair. So these things, this trichology is uniquely intertwined with the treatment of hair loss and dermatology. And we're taught at a very young age, for example, how to take care of our skin and how to protect it. And as we get older, how to anti-age it. But no one's really spent the time to tell us how to take care of our scalp. And I think that's the role of a trichologist, to try to assess these problems, evaluate them scientifically, and then to come up with some kind of a program, whether it's you know, to decrease the oil production that's causing dandruff or, uh, you know, to work hand in hand in glove with a physician who can treat the hair loss problem. That's really good. You know, one of the things that the audience continues to ask us on our blogs and the different venues that we speak at is can anything be done for hair loss and hair thinning? What have you been working on behind the scenes? Because I know you've got a number of things. You, you've just opened up an incredible trichology department from CR Labs out of uh, Bologna, Italy, in the conjunction with the University of Bologna. Tell us more about what you're doing in that department and how it's affecting all over the country with people like ourselves that are, are really getting more advanced and bringing that to America. So what I've put inside Bauman Medical Group, and uh, you know, we're located in Boca Raton, Florida. I have an 11,000 square foot facility you visited, obviously, and you saw that inside the clinic, we now have what I call Salon B. And Salon B, it has a full-time cosmetologist and trichologist who is there to help us manage these scalp issues. 
So when I see a patient in the clinic who has a hair loss problem and they also complain about dry, itchy, flaky scalp or oily, greasy hair or frizzy flyaway, whatever it might be, the, the question or concern that maybe goes beyond just a hair loss problem, then I can bring in the trichologist and we can do a complete evaluation. We can look at things like scalp pH. We can look at moisture levels, sebum levels. We can look with using a microscope with a blue light camera to see the microorganisms, uh, colonies and such, to see whether we've got uh, thinning density or decreasing hair quality or caliber. Look at the inflammation. And then develop a program, a treatment plan. So in conjunction with uh, maybe a hair loss uh, treatment plan, we can create a program that would um, identify and then treat either the, the excessive sebum production or something that we need to do to moisturize the scalp. And that might be just take-home products uh, that the, the client goes home with or maybe in-office treatments. So there's a, it depends on the severity and the, and the condition, actually, how aggressive we would treat it and whether we would do it in the office or at home. And then, of course, whether, uh, uh, you know, what the follow-ups would be and, and how long of a, of a time it would go on. Now, when a client goes through the treatment series, Dr. Bowman, you brought in the training program that I know attended with you in, in uh, Boca Raton uh, at, your, at your, your medical center, you have brought another dimension, which is not only that the CR labs have brought together the instruments to be able to examine a lot of the things you described, but once they're using the treatment, to be able to measure the calibrization of that hair follicle individually, you've really done something with the hair check. Explain, because so often, whether it's one product over the counter or another, they claim, or at two o'clock in the morning, they claim that it grows hair. They, everybody buys it because they're in, in, in their desire of having the solution. Sure. And they use it for a month or two and there's no change and suddenly, you know, they're onto another product and discouragement overwhelms them incredibly yeah. psychologically as well as emotionally. No, and that's, that's a, a big hair problem. Challenge. Yeah, it's, it's been a big, big problem for many, many years. I mean, you know, here we are board certified hair restoration physicians and we're prescribing treatments and procedures and so forth. Anything from uh, medications to oral medications, topical medications laser light devices or nutritionals or hair care products. And what are they actually doing at the level of the scalp to improve your hair growth? Because a hair loss patient may experience hair loss for many, many years and try and spend literally thousands of dollars before they seek medical care or medical evaluation on products that simply don't work. Mm -hmm. But how do we as physicians kind of quantify and measure what's going on with our, with our patient's hair? And the hair check tool is the way that we do that. The hair check tool is an incredibly simple device to use. It takes us five minutes to perform the measurements, and it gives us such a valuable piece of information. It actually measures a cross-sectional bundle. So imagine like taking someone's ponytail and just being able to measure the thickness of that ponytail you know, in a, in, a, in a split second. Well, doing that at a microsurgical level or microscopic level in different locations on the scalp in an accurate way that we can repeat over time, we can tell. Whatever regimen it is, if it's something I prescribe, like a, a topical treatment or, or PRP treatment, whatever it might be, or whether you're going home and doing some kind of yoga pose upside down, you know, I mean, I'm going to be able to tell you in 90 days how much new hair you've grown, um, which percentage of improvement you've had, mm -hmm. which areas it's working, and which areas it's not. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for many years, I think as physicians, we just kind of did a guesstimation from across the room. Yeah, it looks like you're doing okay. Or... Yeah, the photo seems a little bit better, but you know, you have to change 50% of the hair mass in order for the photo to look different, hmm. bad or worse. So that's a lot of leeway in there, and that's not so good. So the hair check tool, which we teach and train uh, physicians and cosmetologists and, and uh, medical estheticians, paramedical people how to use, uh, is a critical step for managing the hair loss process. We've done over 40,000 measurements, I'm proud wow. to say. 40,000 hair checks. Hmm. Well, you also give a lot of confidence to the person who is, needs the time to grow that hair, that their investment of money is not going down the tubes. And at the same time, the result is there for them to see. And in 90 days, that's nothing. And that passes so quickly. But you give them not only the computer readouts and, and, and the generated calibration of that, but it's an ongoing basis because let me just kind of introduce them to, you know, one of your very ultimate specialties that have really um, – blew me away. I've been in surgery with many of the top doctors around the country. Uh, I'm not saying this because I think you're just a wonderful doctor. I'm thinking because you're just amazing. 
you came up with eyebrows and did some of the most amazing eyebrows, hairlines of transplants that I've, I've never ever worked with anybody that's able to get that fine of a line and make it look so natural. A couple of the models you brought for us were just incredible. And I, I attribute that to your, your, your skill and your background, which maybe we'll go into in another, another interview. But, you know, you, you came up through the ranks, even through, you know, medical school to be able to have that expertise to make something better than what you were even being taught. But now going into tran the trans. Well, thanks. I really appreciate that. You know, we take a lot of pride in the hairline work that we do, and whether it's a eyebrow or a hairline or a sideburn or you know the temporal point area or even eyelashes, hmm. um, you know, we, we I spend a lot of time uh, on those areas and, and making sure that the that the procedure comes out 110 percent. And that's something I've always done. You know, for many many years, it was it was the hairline that first attracted me to hair transplant surgery when I was fooled as a surgical resident by a patient who had had a hair transplant and I was unable to tell. And I thought I could spot him a mile away. So that's really one of the things back in the, in the early days that attracted me to the, uh, to the field. Well, I want, I want the audience that's listening because they might have heard the, all of what we just said and, and passed by. You really do transplants to replace eyebrows, eyelashes, and not only the hairline. I know I did a lot of surgery with a lot of the top doctors as a consultant in surgical room to help them lay out, uh, you know, what they didn't realize was a hairline. They were doing the straight lines across the front. But the reality is you actually come into this temple area that may, it virtually is where if you've got hair here and you don't have it here, you look like you've got a, you know, a bad toupee on at that point. You betcha. Would you do do that transplant. Would you just explain what that all means to somebody going through that loss of eyebrows or eyelashes? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, was, well, first, when it comes to the hairline, you know, you're not just receding backwards this way, but you're also receding on the sides. And so if you're trying to restore the hairline and you only do the top, you've really missed two thirds of the frame of the face, in my opinion. So it's really, really important to recreate the, di the change from the hairline in the, in the frontal zone in and around the temples and then, of course, into the temporal point here to frame out the, the face appropriately. And exactly what you said, if you miss it or if you don't plan for that later on, what happens is you have the permanently restored living and growing hairline here and then you're bald back to your earlobes, not a good look. Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to look very artificial. And, uh, you know, one of the things I learned from one of my first mentors who was a plastic surgeon is that you've got to do things in proportion that mother nature does. And if she recedes the hairline back and the temporal point back, in order to turn the clock back a hair, you need to move that forward proportionally. And if you neglect it, then it's going to look off balance. Hmm. And you may not even know why when you see somebody, you know, uh, you know, our vice president, you know, Vice President Joe Biden has had some transplants. He's not a patient of mine, but I can tell that nobody ever did his temporal points. Right, right, right. So he's got all the hair transplanted here, and it's bald back to his ears. It looks weird. It just looks off balance. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we do that. Yeah, it's very routine. And, of course, with the eyebrow, it's even more intricate in order to create the shape and then the contouring and then how the hairs kind of fishbone together in order to form that, uh, the beautiful shape of the eyebrow and the density and the coverage. And you've done some, I've seen the male, but I've also seen what attracts me, which is the female, the beauty of your arc. And you should have been a makeup artist, to be honest. Let's go to the, the, again, just educating the consumer. You don't take a plug out anymore and you don't do a lateral uh, graft any longer. You do something very state of the arts in the transplant market that only a few are now beginning to get into. Explain to them the right. FU. So the old style procedures and a quick history of hair transplant, we went from the plugs, which were what we call four millimeter punch grafts. And those are about the size of a pencil eraser and had like 20 to 30 hairs. So those looked very unusual. Mm -hmm. Then surgeons in the, in the 80s and 90s moved to a strip harvest or linear harvest. In the 2000s, there was a handful of surgeons, myself included, who started to take hair follicles literally as, as small as one at a time or the natural groupings of one, two, or three hairs that naturally grow together on, under the skin. And if we take those follicular units one at a time without a scalpel and without stitches, we can then have no linear scar in the donor area. And that's the technique called FUE, or follicular unit extraction. And it's a technique that I've worked hard at. Many, uh, literally hundreds of thousands of grafts I've extracted personally. And then, of course, me and my team, we've done over 2 million harvests with the FUE approach. Mm. 
Wow. And so the way that that kind of evolved is that we used a manual tool first and I would just do a, a couple of extractions on each patient. This was back in the 2000s. And then uh, as automated tools like the Neograft and others came on the scene, that improved our accuracy and precision and we were able to do larger sessions. And of course today, we have a robot called the Artis that assists us with that kind of extraction procedure. Mm -hmm. But what does that all mean to the, to the patient? I mean, what it means for the patient is that they're going to have a lot less downtime, a lot more comfortable recovery, no linear scar to hide in the back of the scalp, and most importantly, if the, if the hairs are placed artistically, they're going to have a 100% natural looking result when it's all said and done. Hmm. So it's a pretty amazing technology to be able to perform, and we do it every day. <laughs> it's fun. Wait. You know, the amazing part to the public is they don't see behind the scenes. They only see some of the bad results and they don't notice the ones that are beautifully done with, with artistic touch to it. Let's go pre-op and post-op. Now going back to the concept of trichology, many of the plastic surgeons today, before they'll do any facelifts or any kind of eyelid work, they mandatorily expect a patient to go through a esthetician to get their skin ready and even nutritionally now they're doing a lot of work so that the surgery is going to be a hundred percent better sure so that's what you're doing with your pre and post op with trichology yeah so my pre and post op has changed so dramatically over the years it's it's astounding i mean obviously there's you know medications to avoid and and, and nutritional supplements that we can now add in things that even release more stem cells from the bone marrow uh, that we're recommending prior to surgery to help you heal faster um, doing things along with the procedure like low-level laser therapy to improve how the body recovers in terms of its healing in days of old we you know days past we've done hyperbaric oxygen therapy but today, having a trichologist on board, in fact, you know, it reminds me of a patient we just treated uh, about a month ago. He was ready for his surgery, but his scalp was not. And so his scalp was very inflamed um, and it, it needed care. It needed some TLC. So we put together a trichology program for him, which cooled down the inflammation. A lot of the, uh, he had acne issues and things like that on the scalp, a lot of pimples and, and uh, folliculitis. All of these things needed to be cleared up before he was ready to undergo a hair transplant. Hmm. And so hmm. it was really important to have that trichology piece. And I'll be presenting some of that to my colleagues uh, in the very, very near future, because I think it was critical that we did that prior to his procedure in order to get him to heal faster and heal well and, and have the procedure work, work nicely for him in terms of the hair growth. I mean, it was a critical step. Let's talk about two more advancements that has been in the news greatly. Uh, probably a, a lot of what I've seen you do with, with regards, right, being in your office, PRP. I mean, I am very excited about PRP because I've seen the results now. Uh, I've seen your studies. I think five years you've been studying it, so you're not a newbie in the, in the game of uh, jumping into the, you know, PRP. But would you explain in a layman's term what PRP means to the public, the, the layman that doesn't know what that means and how it can help their hair loss or their surgery post or pre? Yeah, sure. And this is important for your listeners to know because uh, people performing PRP are popping up all over the place from dermatologists to plastic surgeons and you name it. So PRP stands for platelet rich plasma. And what that means is that it's an autologous treatment, one that we derive from your own body from a small test tube blood sample that we get in the office. And we turn and, and concentrate that blood sample using special tools, devices, and special kits to process that blood to get to the platelets. So what we want are the platelets. And the reason why platelets are so important is that platelets contain growth factors, which are proteins. These proteins initiate <clears throat> tissue regeneration and repair. It's one of the reasons why a huge number of orthopedic surgeons will prescribe PRP for their injured patients, professional athletes, or you know, Joe Golfer out there with a, with a hurt elbow or shoulder before they undergo surgery, before they even consider surgery to stimulate tissue regeneration and repair. So the good news is that using those platelets and the growth factors that they contain, we can trigger improved hair growth on the scalp. Mm -hmm. So many areas of medicine are using PRP. The dentists, the or oral maxillofacial surgeons to regenerate bone and gum, gingiva. And then the dermatologists are using it to rejuvenate uh, facial contouring and, and to increase volume and to reduce the signs of aging like wrinkles. And orthopedic surgeons, as I already mentioned, but hair transplant surgeons and, and hair loss physicians like myself, we're using PRP for regeneration of the hair follicle. Mm. And it's working great. Now, there are many, I'll tell you, I've been through many, many different devices 
different types of kits and procedures and they're not all created equal. There's a lot of people baking cookies out there, but they're using a lot of different recipes, if you know what I mean. Yes, I do. And so I think it's really important that if you're going to choose someone to even evaluate or think about having a PRP treatment done, that you look at what system and technology they're using. Because many, for example, many dermatologists, even some I've seen uh, on the national news, look like they're using some old-fashioned centrifuge that you know, just spins test tubes. And I will tell you, if you're just spinning a test tube in an old-fashioned centrifuge, you're not getting good quality PRP. Mm -hmm. Forget about it. Right. You know? And you and know, it's interesting it, because... In my office, I mean, you know, we have a hematology counter, so we're doing complete blood count evaluations on the whole blood, what comes out of your body, and then what we're injecting into the scalp. You know, so we know exactly what the platelet count improvement is, the concentrate improvement in the concentration, which is the whole point of doing platelet-rich plasma. It was interesting to watch that happen in your, in your surgical OR um, as, it, as you divided the blood from the plasma and the platelets uh, and then adding the stem cell and adding some other additives. But that young woman, I think she was only 20. Oh, don't give away all my secrets now. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, don't just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the reality is she went through the whole pr uh, process. Yeah. It was not painful. Uh, it was amazing how you, you really didn't just – you know how they do with, with cortisone injections, just popping the top of their head with, with a pin. Uh, you, really, you really designed even the protocol of that process. It was really impressive to me. It really was. Now, you also have, and I, before we run out, out of time for this segment, I want to tap into one other thing that you, ta you taught to that young lady, which is about Rogaine, but the Rogaine that you have been developing a little bit more of an additive. Kind of give us the, the background to that. Yeah, so um, as you know, minoxidil is the active ingredient in Rogaine, and Rogaine has been available for 30 years. Uh, you know, patients have had modest success with over-the-counter Rogaine, and even before it was uh, available over-the-counter, even as a prescription, Rogaine had some issues, and the, the generic, generically available Rogaine is identical in terms of its recipe, and unfortunately, what most people feel with Rogaine is that it's very weak and that it's very messy and greasy and often very irritating on the skin. And a lot of that has to do with not necessarily the minoxidil, the active ingredient itself, but more of the vehicle. Sometimes the vehicle seems to be like foam and it just gets all over the hair and not even in the skin, you know? And you would never want to spray fertilizer all over your garden plants. You want to get it in the soil. Mm -hmm. So minoxidil belongs in the scalp. So for many, many years, we've been using minoxidil and trying to find some very clever compounding pharmacists, some very clever chemists to help us make a better minoxidil to reduce these side effects. And so you're never gonna see another minoxidil product probably be FDA approved. It would take millions and millions of dollars to do that. But clever compounding pharmacists can modify the, the delivery system of minoxidil and make it better. And that's what we found. You know, the first dozen ones didn't work all that well, I have to be honest, but I found something called 82M. And 80, Formula 82M, I wish I could take credit for it. I didn't design it. I didn't invent it. I just, I just found it. <laughs> I found the guy who could make it. And Formula 82M contains a number of ingredients which have been used in conjunction with minoxidil for many years, like, for example, retinoic acid. And there's some really good studies that show when you combine minoxidil with retin-A or retinoic acid, you get a far better penetration of minoxidil. And so that potentiates it. That increases the ability of the minoxidil to do its work, which is great. But still you have the problem, a lot of the Retin-A uh, combination with minoxidils that are out there are still really greasy, they're gooey, and they're, they're not really user-friendly. But what I found with the 82M product, and my patients were telling me this after we tried it, is that it went on much easier. It went on cleaner, it went on drier, and it absorbed quickly into the skin. So right away, they were able to be more compliant with the treatment. They actually got more of the treatment where they needed. They were actually able to do it twice a day, which is how often you need to do minoxidil to get the right results. And of course, the 82M also has some other bells and whistles. It contains a mild antiandrogen, which they often use for acne, called oleanolic acid. It contains a mild anti-inflammatory called flucinolone, just a little whiff of it to keep the inflammation down at the level of the follicle when hair loss is occurring. Mm. It has some antioxidants. And it has a hair and scalp conditioner built into the vehicle. Wow. And it's, so it's a very, very clever. It's, it's the Lexus or Mercedes-Benz of the minoxidil, I would say, because mm. it's a smooth ride <laughs> when you're using it. Um, but there's a lot of horsepower under the hood, too. 
Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've written several white papers on it, and uh, we're very excited to be able to prescribe that to our patients uh, through the pharmacy up in New York called Master Farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had some great success with it. And, you know, in my white papers, it shows that the compliance has improved, that the hair growth effects are very dramatic and profound. And men and women can use this product. It's very exciting. Wow, that's amazing, yeah. especially the women, because I know that that's one of the things that the women in our practice continually complain about. It's greasy, it's oily, and they just, they don't comply. They just yeah. stop, and then all of a sudden, they've got another issue. Yep. So I think it's so important that, that they are able to still style their hair and still look their very best. Absolutely. One of my main, um, you know, philosophies in the practice, especially when it comes to hair growth, because it does take so long to grow a hair. I mean, think about it, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a third of a millimeter a day, a quarter, a half an inch a month, maybe at the most. So it's going to take some time for patients to see that result in the mirror, no matter mm -hmm. what they do. Even a hair transplant takes a full year to grow in. So if we can keep them compliant with any therapy, reduce the barriers to compliance by making the, like the minoxidil easier to use. Mm -hmm. Or a laser fit under your cap, you know, uh, or a treatment that's just once a year instead of every other month, like the PRP. You know, these are things that are going to get the best results for our client, for our patients and clients who are struggling with hair loss. You know, and then to be able to measure the results, boom, then they're 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 solid, you know, mm -hmm. and they're going to get that result in the mirror pretty soon, six to twelve months. That is great. Well, Dr. Bauman, I want to thank you. I know that the audience is probably saying that same thing, and they have all of your, your credentials down below for them to tap into, from your emails to your Facebook to YouTube and all the things that you're doing, uh, and how to get a hold of you directly, because I know that you are so personal with your, with your patients, and your staff is incredible, world-class, world-class. Oh, I just want to say thank you for them helping me get you on the, on the line for this interview because you, know, you were an important part to the, the Hair Thinning and Hair Loss Summit because I'd want to have the best be a part of it. And I, I consider you one of the very, very best. We want to thank our show sponsor, Wigs for Kids, whose mission is to help children look themselves and live their lives. And if you'd like more information on this beautiful charity that helps thousands of children, log on to wigsforkids.org. And remember, the answers to your hair loss concerns won't end here. The conversation continues with more experts and solutions to your questions on hairlosssolutions.tv. And I'd love to hear from you. Send me your message of any concerns that you might have in the Ask Jeffrey section of our website. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube at Hair Loss Solutions TV. Thank you for watching this episode of Hair Loss Solutions TV. And remember, Beauty begins within.